The Hazard Mitigation Grant Program provides funding to state, local, tribal, and territorial governments to mitigate future disaster losses in their communities. This grant is available after a presidentially declared disaster. To be eligible for funding, all state, local, tribal, and territorial governments must develop and adopt hazard mitigation plans to receive funding for project applications. These videos will review the HMGP application process, project eligibility, HMGP post-fire, and project implementation and closeout. To start us off, what is hazard mitigation and what hazard mitigation programs are available through FEMA? In broad terms, hazard mitigation is any sustainable action that reduces or eliminates long-term risk to people and property from future disasters. Mitigation planning breaks the cycle of disaster damage, reconstruction, and repeated damage. FEMA's hazard mitigation assistance provides funding for eligible mitigation measures that reduce disaster losses. It also reduces vulnerability of communities to disasters and their effects. It promotes individual and community safety, increases a community's ability to adapt to changing conditions that will allow it to withstand and rapidly recover from disruption due to emergencies. It promotes community vitality after a disaster and lessens response and recovery resource requirements following a disaster. And lastly, results in safer communities that are less reliant on external financial assistance. FEMA offers several mitigation grant programs. They can be separated into two categories based on their funding type. On the left-hand side, we have the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Program, also known as BRIC, and the Flood Mitigation Assistance Program, also known as FMA. These are competitive grant programs that provide funding to state, local, tribal, and territorial governments on an annual basis. On the right-hand side, we have the post-disaster programs, which are the programs we will focus on in these videos. This includes HMGP and HMGP post-fire grant programs. These programs are intended to provide funding to state, local, tribal, and territorial governments after a disaster so they can rebuild in a way that reduces future disaster losses to their communities. As previously stated, HMGP funding is only made available after a presidentially declared major disaster. Here, you see an outline of the disaster declaration process. The first step in the process is for the state, tribe, or territory to identify an event and assess damages. Next, the governor or tribal government then evaluates if they need federal assistance. If so, the state, tribe, or territory then submits a major disaster declaration request. FEMA Region and FEMA Headquarters review and approve the request, which is then sent to the president for review and approval. The president then authorizes a disaster declaration. And lastly, FEMA makes disaster funding available. A portion of this funding is authorized for HMGP. The HMGP application period opens when HMGP is authorized under the presidential declaration. The application period is open for 12 months from the date of declaration, but can be extended by up to 180 days for a total period of 18 months in the event of extraordinary conditions. Once an application period is closed, it cannot be reopened. The HMGP period of performance begins with the opening of the application period and ends no later than 48 months after the close of the application period. At the request of the recipient and subject to FEMA approval, the FEMA region can issue up to two 12-month extensions to the period of performance. The recipient's request must include a specific and compelling justification for why the extension is required. After project completion, the subrecipient has 90 days to submit to the recipient all of the financial performance and other reports that make up the closeout documents. Then the recipient has 120 days after the period of performance ends to submit the closeout request package to FEMA. Here, we will look at the general application process for HMGP. Eligible sub-applicants submit their sub-applications to the relevant eligible applicants. 
applicants then review and prioritize funding and submit the prioritized sub applications to FEMA for review and funding. It is important to note that individuals cannot apply directly for HMGP funding. They would need to work with the local government offices to submit an HMGP grant proposal. Interested applicants should contact their state hazard mitigation officer. Also, FEMA does not select projects. FEMA reviews and funds projects submitted by applicants. There are three funding categories, projects, planning, and management costs. We will review these categories in more depth up next. Under the planning category, activities are funded to develop state, tribal, and local mitigation plans that meet the planning requirements outlined in 44 CFR Part 201. Up to 7% of an applicant's HMGP ceiling may be used for creating a new hazard mitigation plan, also referred to as an HMP, updating a previous HMP, and planning-related activities. Planning activities can include updating or improving sections of the current hazard mitigation plan, integrating information from hazard mitigation plans into other planning efforts, such as climate adaptation planning efforts, building capability, evaluating adoption of ordinances or codes. Applicants and sub-applicants should refer to the 2023 HMA Program and Policy Guide Part 11A.3.1.2 for more information on eligible planning related efforts. Under the management costs category, management costs are indirect costs and administrative expenses that are reasonably incurred by a recipient or subrecipient in administering an award or subaward. Recipients are eligible to receive up to 10% of the HMGP ceiling amount and subrecipients sub up to 5% of their grant award for management costs. Some example activities include, for the recipient, delivery of technical assistance and training, or review and processing of mitigation plans. And for the subrecipient, developing or processing sub-applications, financial reporting, project monitoring, and closeout review. Management costs may be incurred as pre-award costs. For example, in cases where staff spent time and resources to develop this HMGP sub-application. Applicants should refer to the 2023 HMA Program and Policy Guide, Part 13, for additional information. Under the Projects Funding category, there is Advanced Assistance, the 5% initiative, and regular HMGP projects. Advanced assistance allows advancing up to 25% of the HMGP ceiling, or $10 million, to applicants and sub-applicants, whichever is less. The purpose of advanced assistance is to provide applicants and sub-applicants with resources to develop mitigation strategies and obtain data to prioritize, select, and develop complete HMGP applications in a timely manner. Applicants and sub-applicants may use advanced assistance for many tasks, including obtaining staff or resources to develop a cost share strategy and identify potential match funding, or to evaluate facilities or areas to determine appropriate mitigation actions, or to incorporate environmental and historic preservation considerations early into program decisions. Refer to the 2023 HMA Program and Policy Guide, Part 11B, for a complete list of advanced assistant tasks. Under the 5% initiative, up to 5% of the recipient's HMGP ceiling may, may be used for mitigation measures that are difficult to evaluate using traditional program cost effectiveness criteria. These funds are not eligible to be used in situations where the mitigation activities can be evaluated under FEMA-approved cost-effectiveness methodologies, but do not meet the required BCA threshold. Regular HMGP projects are any mitigation measure or action 
propose to reduce the risk of future damage from the next disaster. We will discuss eligible mitigation project types in the next slides. Additionally, projects may be phased when the project is complex and it is beyond the sub applicants technical and financial resources to provide the complete technical information required for a full eligibility or EHP review of a complex project. If a project is phased, both phase one and phase two must be completed within the award period of performance. Please refer to the 2023 HMA Program and Policy Guide, Part 3D3, for more information on phased projects. Here we go over some examples of eligible mitigation activities. These can include property acquisition, mitigation reconstruction, structure elevation, stabilization, flood risk reduction, flood proofing, tsunami vertical ev evacuation refuge, safe rooms, wildfire mitigation, retrofits, secondary power sources, warning systems, aquifer recharge, storage, and recovery, or other projects. FEMA may provide assistance for other innovative solutions not specifically outlined in this list. All activities will be evaluated on their own merit against program requirements, including eligibility and completeness, cost effectiveness, technical feasibility, and effectiveness, and HMGP program compliance. Here we take a look at nature-based solutions. Nature-based solutions are sustainable planning, design, environmental management, and engineering practices that weave natural features or processes into the built environment to build resilient communities and mitigate the impact of climate change. FEMA uses the term nature-based solutions to refer to an umbrella of strategies, including green infrastructure, bioengineering, and or natural infrastructure. Nature-based solutions can be used to mitigate impacts or damages from drought, extreme temperatures, landslides, coastal and urban flooding, storm surges, and wildfires. Some examples are urban trees, aquifer recharges, dune restoration, and even coral reef restoration. Here, we will explore an example of a secondary power source project. Secondary power sources increase power system resilience and mitigate the impacts of natural hazards while increasing the resilience of critical functions. The purchase and installation of secondary power sources and related equipment, such as hookups and transfer switches, are generally eligible if they are cost effective, contribute to a long-term solution to the problem they are intended to address, and meet all other program eligibility criteria. A microgrid is a group of interconnected energy consuming devices and equipment and distributed energy resources within the clearly defined electrical boundaries that act as a single controllable entity with respect to the utility grid. Microgrids generally operate while connected to the utility grid, but control capabilities such as smart controls enable these microgrid systems to disconnect from the conventional utility grid and operate autonomously to meet the anticipated or potential utility outages. In this example, $4 million in grant funding was awarded to the New York Department of Public Service to provide a microgrid for critical facilities. This system included installation of a new generator and associated equipment to serve approximately 327 residential, 19 non-residential, and 17 public properties. The purpose of this project was to provide power to customers in the event of a power outage. Additional information on microgrids can be found on FEMA.gov. In this video, we've reviewed the basics of hazard mitigation and the FEMA hazard mitigation assistance programs. We talked about the declaration process, the HMGP grant timeline, and the HMGP application process. We gave an overview of the funding categories such as regular projects, management costs, and advanced assistance. Then we wrapped up with a high level look at eligible project types, nature-based solutions, and an example of an HMGP project involving a microgrid. Here we've listed some resources that can relate to the items discussed today and could be helpful 
to viewers. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about the content covered here, please visit the HMGP webpage on FEMA.gov or reach out to FEMA-HMA webinars at FEMA.DHS.gov. Thank you.